Uh, good evening, friends. Welcome back to my channel, Pediatric Classes. Hope you have gone through my previous video on supraventricular tachycardia. Uh, so today we will discuss an, at another important topic that is scrub typhus. Uh, so let me start sharing my screen now. Okay. Uh, so. So this uh, session is about scrub typhus. The cases of scrub typhus are actually increasing in Kerala. Uh, so scrub typhus in Malayalam, it is actually chella bunny. Uh, so this is actually also known as bush typhus. It is caused by a bacteria called Orientia, uh, Orientia susugamushi. And this is spread to people through the bites of infected chiggers of larval mites or larval mites. Okay, So I give an image of the uh, the one might actually act causing it. And the symptoms of the scrub typhus usually begin within 10 days of being bitten. Symptoms, coming to the symptoms, the patient can present you with fever and chills, headache, body aches, muscle pain, a dark scar, scab like uh, lesion you can actually see. So whenever a patient comes to you, just observe the scab like uh, one uh, region where the patient got bitten by the uh, chigger. Okay. So another thing is when as the seriousness of the disease increases, what happens there can be mental changes starting from confusion uh, or coma or even reaching up to coma. And the patient may have enlarged lymph nodes and their rash also may be seen. So in all these typical cases, when you see a fever, which is just look out, be on the lookout for any escar like a lesion seen in the body. And the patient in severe conditions can present you with respiratory failure or, uh, or circulatory failure. They may also have spinomegaly or GI symptoms. They, uh, severe diseases definitely will have organ failure and bleeding, which can be fatal if left untreated. In this scenario, actually many times when the patient present you with a hypotensive shock or a cardiac failure, uh, so don't forget to have a scrub typhus in the back of the mind if their fever is also associated, okay? So that is one point I wanted to tell out here. So how can you diagnose it? See, uh, there is uh, one thing you should have is first thing is a clinical diagnosis. Uh, there are lab investigations, but by the time you get the lab investigations, the precious time will get over. So we have to ask a history of travel to areas where scrub typhus is found. And then wheel felis test is the one test which can be used for this, but is not very reliable. In their immunofluorescence, it is good, but it is not available in resource limited settings. Indirect immunoperoxidase is there. There's actually a modification of indirect immunofluorescence test. I'll try putting an image of, and all, uh, of uh, indirect immunofluorescence onto the lower part of the slide. Okay. But um, most of the time, if you get a patient with a high grade fever with chills and rigors, uh, look out for any, ask for an history of travel to uh, areas where scrub typhus is found, or if you can find out a scar like lesions, then the diagnosis is mostly into a scrub typhus. So what is the treatment? The treatment is very simple. That is, can be driven by using antibiotic doxycycline. So this can, can be used for patients of any age. The dosage is 5 mg per kg in two divided doses. So suppose a 10 kg child is coming to you. So the dose has to be 50 mg. 50 mg two divided will be 25 mg BD. Uh, please note doxycycline will be available as 100 means you can take one fourth of the tablet BD. So likewise, the dosage should be very clear. It is 5 mg per kg per day in two divided doses. The antibodies are most effective if given soon after the symptoms are started. People who are treated uh, early with doxycycline usually recover faster. So what about the prevention? There's no vaccine available to prevent scrub typhus as of now. So what is our idea is we have to prevent getting bitten by the Triggers. So, when traveling to areas where scrub typhus is common, avoid areas with a lot of vegetation and bush where triggers are, be, are found. And there's another thing is we can use some insect repellents. Uh, we can apply, but do not put the repellent on the skin directly. Uh, okay. So, we are, so if, suppose if you are using sunscreen, apply the sunscreen before applying the insect repellent. So, when to the skin, first the sunscreen, then the insect repellent. Okay. 
But and another thing about children, you have to cover the children properly. That would make them wear a dress that will cover the arms, legs, or even the, the carava stroller, everything. Uh, with a mosquito net, we can cover. Okay. Do not apply insect repellent onto children's child's hands, eyes, mouth, or, or cuts or on irritated skins. In adults, we can actually spray insect repellent onto our hands and then just apply to child's face if there is so many of so much of our chiggers found in that in area. But uh, do not never apply directly, okay? And another one thing is suppose our dress is having some mice like thing, what to do? They treat the clothing and gear with 0.5% permethrin or per purchase permethrin treated items. See, please note, these are from the CDC guidelines. Uh, I've taken it, uh, just a very good guidelines available. Please go through it, CDC guidelines. Permethrin change, what does it do? It kills the chiggers and can be used to treat the boots, clothing, camping gear, etc. Treated clothing will remain protective after multiple washings also. Okay, so they say they have given the product information. This is available over that we can purchase it also. If treating items by yourself, again, that what is given in that product, thing, how actually we should be treating it out. Do not use permethrin related products directly onto skin because when you are using a permethrin products for the clothing, it is supposed to be for clothing, not to offer for your skin. So that is a, this is a very short video. So all the things which we have to know is so this is spread by a bacteria called Orangia susukamushi. So spread through the uh, bites of infected uh, chiggers. So we have to be very careful wherever is there is uh, more chance of this scrub typhus avoid a, traveling to those areas. If at all you are traveling to this, take adequate precautions. And the, the drug of choice on this treatment will be doxycycline in the dosage of 5 mg per kg per day in two divided doses and the adequate precautions should be taken whenever you are traveling or are taking your child for a travel to an area where the scriptivus is endemic now. Uh, so thank you so much for your patient listening and hope you like this uh, short video. If you like this video, please don't forget to like it, subscribe and comment. Thank you.